Hello, I'm back again, back once again, to do another video about wildlife photography. Um, I just got back in from a shoot and it wasn't actually going to be a shoot. I, I've been working in, I work from home and I've been working all day and I was like, do you know what, I need to just get out of the house. I hadn't left the house yet, so off I wandered down to the coast. Um, I live about 10 minutes away from the sea um and i just did my normal route which is like down the road cross the road through the houses and onto the coast path basically it's like concreted um pathway next to the rocky beach and then yeah there's a bit of like scrubland around the cliffs and things so it's just a normal area loads of people walk there and i just went without my camera i just went for a walk because i was like i just need the fresh air you know blow away the cobwebs um there's quite a big um wind blowing today and it was yeah great for that um and as i was walking past one of the cafes i saw a little bird and i was like huh didn't expect to see you here and this is a bird that i've been wanting to photograph for a little while now um and i thought i would end up going down to a local estuary and getting all like geared up in waterproof trousers and waterproofs and like lying in the mud or sand and like being on the floor and I thought that's how I would get photos of this bird but no it turns out I just had to go down the road um obviously I didn't have my camera so I did a tiny little video on my phone thinking oh that might be enough but then I was like this might not be something I see again so I ran ran home <laughs> grabbed my camera gear and thought you know what if it's still there when I get back, because it takes me about, you know, 15 minutes to get back to my house and then back again. So I was like, do you know, if it's still there, then it's meant to be. And it was, it was, it was right there, um, <laughs> bustling around. And the bird was a sandling. Just to give you an idea of how close, I mean, you can probably see there's a video I've done. I'll see if I can insert it like here or something on my phone but like it was maybe I don't know a couple of meters away from me not that far at all there's something there's something really cool about it because I feel like when you see animals in their habitat you can't really relate if that makes sense like it's their world whereas if you see them in our world there's a different kind of context there's a different kind of comparison and yeah, I really enjoy that. I also like that you can get a sense of scale as well to how big the bird is. Um, if a bird's just, you know, sat in the sand or in a tree, you don't know how big the tree is. You don't know how, you know, <laughs> there's nothing on sand to give it that perspective. If it's within, you know, like here, this bird was, you know, around benches, um, around stools. Even just being on concrete, I feel like, you know, we kind of know how big that's out there. We don't know how big concrete is, but maybe we do just based on the grain of it. We can kind of give it more of a scale. So, yeah, I was really... This one's weird, actually. Look how weird that is. This one looks as though it's blending into the concrete. Maybe I'm just tired, but this looks like it's just like sinking into concrete when actually it's it's the water. It's a puddle on the concrete. Um, that's really tripped me out. <laughs> So I spent maybe, I don't know, 20 minutes with this bird, maybe half an hour, um, which was very special actually. You know, I, I like taking pictures of birds because it means I can show other people what I see, but really I just enjoy spending time with them. I enjoy having kind of weirdly I mean they're intimate moments really you know that sounds really cliche that sounds really weird maybe to some people who don't do a lot of nature watching but honestly it's like spending time with any animal you know you spend time with a pet and you get to know them it's the same with birds I find that the more I spend time with them the more I get to know their species personality and then even individual personalities um I don't know if any of these pictures will come out but hopefully there's one or two where yes so the framing i like the framing of these um i really just enjoy 
yeah the foreground and the, yeah it's just it's so it's a bird out of place really you know traditionally traditionally you would see this on the beach in the sand and the other, the other thing i really like about um photographing wildlife locally and in more built up urban areas is that you can kind of they usually oh look at that that's stunning i'm so happy with that um brilliant this is just me reacting to my photos and i don't even know if i'm going to be able to edit all this together but i'm going to try um <laughs> the, the thing that i love about photographing birds especially or any wildlife really in these kind of environments is that they like they've come somewhere where there's people so they are aware of people they are comfortable with people um i highly doubt that someone has managed to tame a sander thing but this is somewhere where food is readily available you know there's still crumbs i don't know if this is seed or not um it's hard to tell but it could well be it's possible that maybe the cafe owners have seen this bird and it's a repeated visitor i'll have to go back and see but um yeah it's it's nice to photograph birds that are comfortable with you and you know I, I'm happy to photograph birds that aren't comfortable with me, I'm happy to do the field work, I'm happy to do the, you know, stalking or the retreating if they seem to notice, you know, I'm happy to photograph birds that are nervous and very wild, wild, um, but, you know, there's something about photographing birds that see you and are fine with you being there that's really, like, very special, you know, this bird could have run away flown away at any time and it just kind of potted around and a couple of times it even like lay down on the floor um <laughs> and i don't i'm gonna have to look up that behavior and see if that's like a maybe a defense behavior maybe it's trying to be camouflage oh, i'm really happy with that shot too great ah oh, i'm always paranoid i'm never going to get sharp shots um especially when birds move this fast but I'm really happy with that one. That's great. Um, but yeah, so basically this day was so windy. The weather has been shocking. Like, like so English is the best way to put it. Um, so yeah, this is it kind of like, <laughs> it's kind of like just kind of given up for a bit. All that scattling around and um, battling against the wind. So much so that every time it, it kind of had the chance, it would just... It would just sit down pictures and wildlife pictures but when you have a zoom lens or a telephoto lens well especially when you have a zoom lens it's very tempting to just stay zoomed in the whole time and get the closest shot you can get but i have I, I really do make the effort to like zoom out and get a slightly wider picture so this one kind of shows you know the location you can see like you know we've got a truck to one side where they're doing some kind of building work there's people around there's litter unfortunately that's maybe not as clear but that piece of blue you know tissue paper was just rolling and rolling around and normally I'd pick it up but with Covid I'm kind of a bit skeptical about picking up stuff that's been in other people's hands so it's a hard one and this was interesting this bird just like it was feeding from the wall now I always wonder when I see this kind of thing like at what point does a bird that forages in the sand and in seaweed in very wild places at what point does that bird come in land and go oh i'm gonna like check out this wall and like put my beak in a wall like they just <laughs> it's it's amazing it's so clever um it really is so that was really cool to watch and it was proper like at some points it was really like stretching up to get higher um and i guess it is i, I say this is surprising but it's it's not really because this is right next to a rocky coastline so a rocky wall a rocky coastline what's really the difference in the mind of a bird other than people and dogs there's lots of dog walkers um but yeah so these final photos are the last kind of ones i took and so i'm really happy with the front on ones i think they're quite interesting and i'm very happy as well with these side on ones but i did feel like i've had my share of this bird's time I didn't want to take the mickey out of its energy levels. Here we go. Look how tired it is. Bless its little heart. Oh my gosh. They are the cutest wader. I I swear down. They are the cutest wader. 
Um, and here we go. I did actually, I did do the full zoom. I did do the full zoom. I couldn't help myself. But um, yeah, after I'd kind of done this set of shots, I decided that's enough. Enough is enough. Let's leave this bird to chill out, regain its energy, and then get on with feeding. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, let me know if you've ever laid down on concrete and photographed a bird, and if so, what it was. And let me know if you've ever seen sandlings doing this, or any other wading bird, like, completely going to the opposite end of its habitat, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, hope you've enjoyed this, and if you would like to get more updates, I've got a newsletter. It normally goes out at least once a month. I try to do updates in between, but uh, life gets in the way. So yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you again. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a great day, night, wherever you are, and I'll see you soon. Bye!